Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial journalist and financial analyst and a research engineer in telecommunications. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you about my results in studying the current electric car market. And there's basically, you know, several interesting electric cars out there. So obviously, uh, if I can just turn over to the, uh, let me share my screen, turn over to the actual list. I have a number of different lists here. What we've got here was a sort of a short list of some of the best cars. You can go onto YouTube and uh, see yourself uh, and see which ones you like stylistically the best. Um, and the interesting thing, when you factor in the savings of, uh, of uh, charging your car at home at night over using gasoline, uh, combined with the $7,500 tax credit, and here in the state of California, often a $2,000 tax credit, uh, the cost of ownership is, is really uh, incredible. And really, you shouldn't buy a uh, used because the uh, best used deals I found is around $15,000 for one that still has a fair amount of battery and range. And you can get the Nissan Leaf S Plus, which is a 226 mile range uh, uh, vehicle uh, for uh, after rebates, 22900 Now, of course, you're a, a mid income person, you may not have $7,500 in total federal taxes. Um, and remember, if your paycheck is only, uh, uh, if you're getting a, a, a refund from the IRS of $3,000 and you're getting withholdings, you're probably close to $7,500 because of the withholding. So some people are more or less sophisticated about knowing how much actual federal tax they spend. So uh, the Nissan Leaf is the, the best value for money um, just off the gate if you're looking for the cheapest price, followed by the Hyundai Kona Electric, which has a slightly higher range and it's slightly more expensive. And um, the, the next one after that really is this Hyundai Ioniq, uh, which uh, is, uh, I wish it was a bit cheaper, but it, it does uh, go, go up a great deal from 24.5 up to 35. But this is uh, raising a lot of um, attention it is as close to a competitive Tesla as we have, um, and the range is, is much higher. It's a, a crossover vehicle. And then, of course, there is the Tesla Model 3 itself. Uh, the, um, you really want the long range, but unfortunately, Tesla doesn't qualify for the rebate. So you will have to spend at least $10,000 more to get a Tesla than an Ionic 5. And of course, the main advantage of the Tesla, above and beyond its uh, software and engineering, is its charging network. Um, however, the Ionic 5 has an incredibly fast charging capability. So it will be extremely competitive with the Tesla for being able to largely charge your vehicle up in less than 20 minutes when you go to supercharger type stations. Now, the other issue is the cost of ownership. And there's also customer service and things like that. But in terms of efficiency, inside EVs is definitely the place to go. And you'll see here on this particular chart, which is not at all uh, uh, dated, it's, it's uh, the, and then I believe these sort of uh, real world efficiencies. Yeah, this is basically the um, watts per mile. So basically for each kilowatt, which is sort of the electric vehicle's version of a gallon of gas, although really 10 kilowatts is more like a gallon of gas, uh, you know, kilowatt at home might cost 10 cents if you're lucky at night. Um, and so you get four miles for 10 cents, that's two and a half cents a mile for the Tesla Model 3 standard range. Um, and it'll drop a little bit in cold weather, but you'll see that the, the Tesla followed by the Ionic, the Lucid, is an extremely expensive vehicle. It's made by the uh, guy who invented the Tesla S, um, but they're at least $70,000. Um, and of course, the Ford F-150 Lightning is going to be an extremely important vehicle for people that want a truck. Um, the, uh, but it'll be a few more months before those are really out in any kind of um, uh, supply to the point where they're not getting gouged. So 
Right now, the rumors of gouging of as much as doubling the, the list price on them, uh, adding $40,000 dealer markups. Uh, and those things will stop happening, although you may have to order <laughs> six months or a year in advance. So I've looked around, I can find Ionix today. Uh, there's uh, all over California, they are shipping, they are arriving, you can get them. Now, where does the Nissan Leaf show up in this efficiency uh, spectrum? And, um, you know, I do not see the Leaf even on the first uh, 10 or so vehicles here. I'm looking for the Leaf. Ah, there it is. The, the Leaf looks to me like around 324 watts per mile. Uh, so um, the cost of ownership will be, you know, 20% higher than getting a Tesla or a Hyundai Ionic, and it'll be about 10% um, higher than getting a, a Hyundai Kona. Um, so, uh, you know, this I'm going to put this uh, document into uh, the notes and you can access it yourself online. Um, I, I got some real world range information. I didn't really see anything that needs to be called out here. The Kona, Kona is actually real world experience was 7% less. Uh, the Tesla Model 3 was 12% less. Um, uh, I don't know if we've got the Ionic in this lineup or not. The Nissan Leaf was 11% less. Um, let's see here. Do we see anything really interesting? But yeah, of the ones I saw, it, it, it wasn't really enough to call it out uh, and say, um, you know, there's a huge deal. It's, they're all around 12 to 6% off of what they claim. And, you know, this is a reason why I didn't put the VW ID4, which is a beautiful car for people who like um, the look and feel of like something like the Volkswagen Passat. Unfortunately, there's two problems with this car. We go to the, uh, the VW, um, you know, I want to see the 2022 stats, but uh, the 2021 stats, these guys are just way too inefficient. The 2021 at 347 miles, uh, 347 watts per mile, you know, is uh, one third less efficient than the Tesla or the um, Hyundai Ioniq. So it's a possibility, and, and you know, if you do some research, you may find the 2022 Volkswagen um, ID4, or maybe some future Volkswagens uh, will beat this. So the, you know, the Volkswagen is an interesting car, and um, you know, it is uh, cheaper than the Hyundai Ioniq. Um, so uh, the boil the ocean sheet I did here, the, I scraped everything off of the EV site. You know, uh, uh, inside EVs to get all the credit for this, but I scraped everything off of this that I could, um, and it's fairly clean. So you know, you know, there's a lot of data in here, and then we want to know about things like uh, storage um, features and so forth. Um, but if you're in a hurry to get a uh, uh, get to the bottom line, uh, you know, the the Leaf, the Kona. And uh, the Ionic and the Tesla, you know, are definitely the ones to look at. Um, and now I want to just bring up one other point, uh, which is um, the amount. You know, what I've been studying these electric cars for a while. I'm a technology enthusiast, and it, it's a real pity that we don't have a decent train system in the U.S. Uh, we you, there's so much money being spent on these. Uh, individual vehicles and we're in a time with the uh, you know with the coronavirus uh, where society is extremely atomized people are very isolated and um, of course that isn't going to get me to sell anybody on trains um, but presumably we'll get a handle on this uh, virus and we'll be able to adapt our trains to viruses but it's really shocking how little we invest in public transport and so there's cool cars. What about cool trains? Uh, you know, what about cool planes? And um, another factor is, is, you know, you're on the road, you've got all these big trucks in front of you. There's no need for all these big trucks to be in front of you. Trains are much more efficient per pound or per kilogram of material than um, automotive, 
uh, systems. Um, and um, so, you know, I was looking at the U.S. economy on this, you know, our economy is around 20, 22 trillion a year. Gasoline sales alone are $400 billion. Whereas public transport, the entire uh, economic, uh, economics of public transport is only 80 billion, one fifth of just what we spend on uh, the gas. Then we spend 500 billion on the vehicles, including semis. Uh, then we spend a little bit less than 100 billion on the maintenance. Um, so, you know, look at these massive numbers, which add up to over a trillion dollars, probably. And then compare that to public transit, 80 billion. Railroad construction was 24 billion. I didn't pull out the numbers specifically on um, railroad operations, but it's just a tiny, tiny fraction. And then air transport, 641 billion. So this country has really neglected its rail infrastructure and it leads to congested roads. While we're not with electric vehicles running on renewable energy, it leads to a lot more air pollution. Um, and also leads to a society that is not uh, a community. Um, you know, it's a society where we're all acting just as individuals and everything we do is, um, it, it drives us more and more to not be in a, um, you know, a social uh, uh, integration. Um, and this is a picture actually not of a European fancy dining car, but this is a picture of a dining car in Indiana uh, back in the golden age of rail. So, you know, I wish that all the, you know, Elon Musk fans and um, all of the electric car fans would think about, let's put, you know, one quarter of the energy we're putting into electric cars and cool new airplanes into a good transit system. Uh, uh, there's a lot of inconveniences created by our lousy transit system. Uh, and uh, we spend so much on transport uh, that by not integrating it in a rail type of system, uh, we just lost out. Uh, you know, where a lot of people live, you have to take three hops to use rail if you want to get from your town in the suburbs to, uh, you know, a, uh, an event in the city. Um, there's, you may have a, you know, maybe two hops if you're lucky. Um, and really we spend by far and away enough money that we could make this so that we had a good hub and spoke system that made virtually every trip just as fast by public transport as it is by private car. And it allows you, uh, of course, not to have to drive while you're doing it, not to get in accidents uh, and so forth. So uh, that's my presentation. I hope it's of use. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.